there are going to be new devices perhaps in the next two to three years which may help us with patients with resistant hypertension. These are persons who we don't have an identifiable cause of hypertension that can be easily removed or corrected, so they don't have clearly secondary hypertension. that are on three or more drugs and still not at appropriate goal. The cardiologist, interventional cardiologist and interventional radiologist are really looking forward to this. It is approved in Europe, perhaps or more easily approved. In the United States, it's still undergoing review. The renal sympathetic nerve is ablated. The person can have an overnight stay and go home uh, without any morbidity. In the study called Simplicity 1, they looked at patients with resistant hypertension on three or more drugs, including a diuretic, middle-aged patients, significant number of women, 31% were diabetics, the baseline blood pressure 176 over 98. And this is a fairly easy to do procedure. The complication rate was quite low. If you look at the bottom of the slide, three groin pseudoaneurysm sounds bad, but that's something commonly seen with cardiac catheterization. The severity of it is not clear from the paper. The one, two, three, six, and 12 months, and then at the long 24 months, there was consistently 20 over 10. At the end of 24 months, 34 over 4 reduction in blood pressure. And that type of blood pressure may decrease strokes as much as 60 to 70 percent. The conclusion of the investigators was that renal denervation has substantial benefits over two years, but there's going to be further studies to confirm those findings. The next procedure is perhaps more invasive. It actually is similar to implanting a defibrillator. It's 265 patients randomized to barrel reflex activation to lower blood pressure. As you know, the carotid sinus is replete with sympathetic nervous activity and maybe one of the sites that leads to poorly controlled blood pressure. Barrel reflex activation was randomized in a two to one format. This is what the procedure looks like. Your subcutaneous pocket, similar to a defibrillator. You're not actually piercing the carotid artery. It's going to wrap around the carotid artery, stimulate it, and by stimulating centrally, you decrease outflow to the sympathetic nervous system. Now, there were various means of measuring efficacy. One was the acute efficacy. This was the primary endpoint, and it was not met. There were 54% responders in group A. Those were the persons who were stimulated, and the margin did not reach the primary endpoint. However, the point, which may be clinically significant, and that's the proportion of subjects who reached a systolic blood pressure less than or equal to 140, the p-value less than 0.005, the red uh, box being those persons who were stimulated at the uh, six months and the green box are the persons who were stimulated acutely, and you can see that there's 42 versus about 24%. So it did seem to work, it did seem to lower blood pressure, and it's going to lead to further studies with this intervention. One of the criticisms of these persons, it's not really clear whether they want appropriate doses of diuretics. GNC-8 is probably going to suggest that we're underutilizing chlorothalidone, there's also going to probably be a suggestion under use about 17 of these persons were on aldosterone mechanism. So perhaps from a hypertension point of view, the device worked, but they may not have been really optimally treated. This is an interesting area, and I know it's a, something our surgeons are really excited about. Absolutely. They, but uh, I shared the concerns about the, the issue of maximal medical therapy, and also I think this is a case where uh, interesting in terms of regulations, normally the FDA just, in the device area versus the drug area, uh, I wonder what type of bar you'll have to get through to get approval here. Do, do, would you need to show anything towards outcomes or longer term safety? No, I don't think, it's, it's going to be more safety and yeah. efficacy. There was another endpoint for the uh, carotid stimulator, and that was for procedural safety. It was okay. an 82% procedural safety bar, and they didn't make that either because of bleeding. Some people with the stimulation had dysphonia, dysphagia. So you can have problems with these procedures. Diagnostic cardiac catheterization, for instance, just to see if a person has blockage is now considered 
out of the guidelines and out of mainstream medicine. I mean, Chris, you know at one time we would send people for calves just to take a look-see. Right. Well, it's an easy procedure, but one out of 5,000 may have been certainly just to get a diagnosis of coronary disease, it would be considered adverse to cause a stroke. I think to control blood pressure, we probably need to restrict sodium, <clears throat> maximize diurea, maximize RAS blocking agents, perhaps use spironolactone as an add-on. Only 17% of the patients were on that, and that is the appropriate approach to resistant hypertension before we go to these devices.